B2B service-based business owner, and you are looking to gain more clients, create more impact, and more revenue in your business, tune in to Amplify Your Marketing Message with Christine campbell Rappin. Every week, we're going to take you through how to build an audience of buyers, mastering your marketing message, and making offers that convert consistently. We'll see you all on the inside. Welcome back. Do you ever wonder if you are leaving money on the table as a business owner? There is honestly nothing more heartbreaking than watching my peers and people just like you do that, which is why I'm so excited to bring you an episode today that's going to crack this code, bring you a sense of awareness to help you truly, truly amplify your marketing message. Give a very warm welcome to our guest today. This is Holly Jean Jackson, and she is a revenue and performance consultant who's going to help us not do this forevermore. So let's kick it off, Holly Jean. Where are people the most often as business owners leaving money on the table? Yeah, great question. And this is one of my favorite questions to answer because everybody wants to see the money. It makes me think of Jerry Maguire, show me the money. And it breaks my heart that so many business owners leave money on the table in pretty obvious places. One of the ways that I find business owners leaving money on the table is in their lead generation process. They simply haven't dialed in their message. They're being too salesy. They're not standing out from the crowd. Or sometimes they're even marketing and reaching out to the complete wrong audience. Uh, that's one of the areas they leave money on the table. Another area is sales, your sales process. So often I have potential clients, clients, people in the community sharing that, oh, I have a lead generation problem. But when we dig into it, they actually have a sales problem. Their sales conversion percentages, they don't know. They don't know what that means. They don't have a, an actual process dialed in. They're trying to outsource sales, but they haven't fixed it for themselves. And they're expecting a team to magically deliver something they can't even do themselves. And essentially, if you have a lot of people coming in and having conversations and you're not converting those into sales, you don't have a lead generation problem. You have a sales problem. And so that's one of the areas we'll dig into is optimizing your sales process and making sure that that's working. And then another really big and super disappointing area where I find business owners leaving money on the table time and time again is with their customer experience. There's nothing worse than investing time and money and resources into your leads, converting them into customers, and not then not delivering an amazing customer experience. And there's a lot of ways that we can create raving fans to get referrals one after another for weeks and for years. But there's nothing sadder than you know discovering a business coach, a consultant, a company, who's losing customers at a specific time in the customer journey, and they don't even see that gap. They don't even see there's a problem. And they're certainly leaving money on the table because as we all know, getting leads is expensive. You know, if you guys are paying attention and you've been here on our podcast for a long time, you will know that all three of these huge lost opportunities are topics you're going to find experts coming to help you with because the one that really, really stood out for me, because I, I think I could stand on the soapbox about it, is you don't have a lead gen problem, you have a sales problem. And while we are talking about marketing, the whole goal of marketing is to move somebody from curiosity to paid client, which means you have to have the sale happen. You have to have the yes, the buy-in and the commitment to whatever programs and services you're having. And I heard a really gold nugget there, which was the answer is not outsourcing this to someone else when you haven't cracked the code yourself. That is true for messaging. That is true for sales. That is true for the client experience because the accelerators of getting help only work when you have a really solid foundation. So I absolutely loved all three of those because I 100% agree with you. And the truth is that to be a great business owner, we want to talk about peak performance. How do you step in so these are not lost opportunities, but these are in fact key foundations that you grow from? So let's talk about what do you think it means to even say peak performance as a business owner? 
Yeah, great question. So this is one of the questions that I ask leaders on my own podcast, and I get so many different responses. But ultimately, I believe peak performance as an individual and a business owner are very unique to each person. However, it starts with having a strong foundation of you as a business owner, having the energy that you need, having the support tools that you need so that you can show up as the very best version of yourself. And we know there's the roller coaster of life, but how can you be as close to 100% every day? For some business owners, this means meditation daily. For others, it means exercise. For others, it means they need to have a community and others, they need a team that's able to support them. So regardless of how you arrive at your definition of peak performance, it's essential that we define your definition of peak performance, your definition for success, and we can't compare and despair looking at others or looking to others to define that. So when I'm working with business owners, one of the first things that we do is we define their life priorities. We also define their quarterly business goals and ultimately their long-term goal that keeps them inspired and excited to keep going at this every single day. And when you have that that North Star or that compass guiding you, you're going to say yes to the right things and no to the wrong things. And to me, that's how you achieve peak performance and define it for yourself and show up as a leader for your organization so that your employees can also shine. I love this because so often we think that we appropriate somebody else's version of peak performance. I love that you're bringing in the diversity of the answer to it because peak performance is as diverse an answer as it is what does success look like. And when we are looking to amplify our message, when we're looking to bring in more additional client, it gets built by value first thinking. Guess what? It means you need to sit with your own values, sit with your own thoughts. And remember that the business is a platform to create the life you want. It's not an accident. It is by design. And so I want to ask you, because you you gave a couple of great examples of what does it mean for you to tune up, to show up, to be your very best self? What do you personally do that gets you into the state of mind where anything is possible and I'm bringing my A game? Yeah, great question. I mean, there's a lot of things that I do, but one of the most essential things for me is doing my morning meditation and visualization. And when I do that, I'm actually tuning into my values because that's the only way I can show up with my energy and not be confused by other people or if my chemistry is off that day, my hormones are off that day, but really tuning into my values and what I'm about And ultimately looking at that compass for myself, that long-term goal of starting a nonprofit for kids and having the business fund the operational budget, like that, that inspires me. And then also just meeting amazing people like Christine here and other people that are doing incredible good things in the world that lifts me up and keeps me going because it makes me, reminds me that I'm not alone and that there's incredible goodwill in the world and we need to expose more of that. I love it. And it is about checking in not just at the start of the day and i love that you tee up the start of the day because how you start the day is definitely going to impact how you have that that moment and we say don't let 10 minutes of a misdirection hijack you peak performance means reset it means go into it and um you know one of the things that i love to do is you absolutely have to have that north star what is it that feels non-negotiable for you and that means i'm going to step into the unknown And I love what I also heard you say was I slow it down. I do check in. Are my actions moving me closer to my big vision, knowing that it is a step I build towards and also call my own BS, which says, nope, I'm not at my optimal hormones, food, energy, commitment levels. And so the only person I check is the reflection in the mirror and then say, It's not up to me to be my only fuel source, guys. You've heard me say this a lot on the episode. I absolutely 100% believe it. You do not have to be your only fuel source, but you must be your own engine. Because what you want and the lifestyle you're creating is yours. If it's not delivering in this season the way you want it to, take a course correction. If it's no longer serving you because your life is shifting, guess what? Reset as often as you need. So I'd love to talk about when you're growing and you're connecting and you're committing to not leaving money on the table on those three foundations and you're going to step in to be the very best version of yourself in pursuit of the things that let your soul on fire. 
where does it come into building your networks? We did talk about what lead generation failures are. How do you grow lead generation? You have a particular platform you like to use. Let's talk a little bit about that. Yes, I see time and time again, so many business owners not leveraging the LinkedIn platform. And in, in addition to that, not leveraging the ability to build their own community, showing that they're an expert. So right, right now we're talking, Christine and I are speaking, we're live streaming to different platforms. I'm sure she's going to share this on LinkedIn. That means she's not just posting on LinkedIn, but she's creating a community for her listeners, for people in, in her tribe, her business tribe that actually trust her to bring on people to her platform that she trusts. So LinkedIn is super, super powerful. And there are a lot of ways to do LinkedIn the wrong way. We've mm -hmm. all been spammed in our inboxes, mm -hmm. that person that immediately just asks for the first date before you even have a conversation. And it's super awkward and it's a huge turnoff. But if you use LinkedIn from the premise of building a relationship, building your community, connecting with those potential purchasers, partners, promoters, and platforms, those are the four Ps that I'm teaching my clients constantly to bring into their world and their orbit. And you don't just focus on the short term of connecting when they're ready, if they are the 2% of people that actually need your services today, but in the long term, also nurturing them by posting content that's relevant and not just selling them stuff, but actually sharing things that are of value. When you do that and you show up consistently, that's where the magic happens. That's where you start getting the floodgates of people knocking down your door that want to work with you because you've added value over the years. You've added value over the days and they trust you. And then when you partner it that with having something like a monthly networking event or a podcast or a different platform that you can really elevate people and expose them, they're going to want to work with you even more because that gives you credibility. But it also helps you with elevating the people in your network and community that you believe should have that sound box. And that's why I have my monthly networking event, which is similar to Christine's. It's called Your Message Matters. And that community is growing. And I get people in that community that have never personally worked with me that will come on and say, you need to hire Holly. She's amazing. So you create those raving, raving fans while adding value. And that's the sweet spot on LinkedIn. And I think what LinkedIn is often not understood as, as this is the platform for community. I think sometimes we, we think that Facebook is the conversation for community and LinkedIn is the professional space. But I'd like to challenge you, hearing what you've just said, Holly Jean, is this is a place for conversation. And we know that to be having reach in LinkedIn, it is about the conversation. It is about generating content that sparks conversation. It is about building and amplifying each other because social proof is seen as such an important credibility piece and trust builder in the professional community. And from there, it's think about the tools that LinkedIn is providing you. You can, like this one, it's going to be live streamed and is live streamed in the LinkedIn platform. You've got audio opportunities. If you're not somebody who loves video, you've got newsletters, you've got ways to invite people to events. And the way to do this effectively is to play the long game because you do not show up or please don't show up with the expectation of an immediate return. It can happen if you're very good with your message and you're very clear with your buyer audience and you're very clear with the results, most of us, we've heard, leave money on the table because we're not. Therefore, this gives you an opportunity to fine tune and recognize that because there's such a small percent, you said 2% people are ready to buy. This gives you a way to introduce, reintroduce, talk to people having multiple touch points. Seven to 12 used to be the number. I think you're probably closer to 12 to 20 now before you have the engagement of hiring or talking about transactional partnership. So play the long game. Talk to me about what you think LinkedIn does to help us not leave money on the table. Where, where can we best tie those two pieces together? Yeah, so while we say that there's only 2% of the audience that you're connecting with that are ready to buy, you notice I mentioned four different Ps that we go after. So purchasers is only one of those four groups. And those are your buyers, your potential clients. You also have partners. So figuring out who your non-competitive partners are. 
So Christine and I have had conversations. We serve people in different ways. We can refer business back and forth to each other. So I consider Christine a partner, but I also consider Christine a platform. We are speaking on her platform today. So that is obviously getting me in touch with her audience. This is another, like one of the P's you want to go after people that have podcasts, people that have TV shows, radio show hosts, and we can set up campaigns for that on LinkedIn. And yes, mm -hmm. the, there's a way to do automation that is not ugly or salesy or gross or spammy or slimy, all those things that are going through your head. Thank and you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and that's what I help business owners set up with the LinkedIn easy button lead gen system is a way to reach those four P's. You can find people that are your potential promoters where they're going to cross market your content because they believe in what you're doing. And when you do that, it's so much more powerful than just relying on that 2% of buyers that are ready. You're exposing yourself exponentially as your connections and followers grow while also playing the long-term game and giving tremendous value to your partners, your promoters, and your platforms. So if you get nothing else out of this, there is so much power on the LinkedIn platform and people are barely dipping their toes into this or they're going about it the whole wrong way where it is gross and slimy and that hurts your reputation so much. Uh, and we're going to invite you, both of us, with strong arms in the air saying, shift. Think about the power of those four Ps because those four Ps help you to create the fifth P, which is profitability, which is the right people with the right value, with the right community behind you. And this is really about knowing what is your ask. And the ask isn't just buy my stuff. The ask is how do I add value to your world? How do I create things that are going to be a mutual win-win? And you know, Holly, Eugene, and I had a connection through another person. Many of my guests are. They're referred into my network. And I always say to people, before I invite anybody into this space, you are being invited into my network. That's more valuable than any airtime on one episode will be because I don't believe that's the start and end of the relationship. It's so much more than that. And you know, you'll see content around that here on Amplify Your Marketing Message. Holly, I love what you're about. And that's why, of course, we've invited you to come play with us today. Talk to us about what is working right now in your business to create movement that's building momentum as you gear up for the final half of the year and into the new year. Oh my goodness, Christine, this is an exciting time to be sharing what's working because my business, it's ironic. A lot of people will come to me freaking out about the recession. My last two quarters have been exponentially on fire with growth. Like, yeah, profitability is definitely here. Growth is here. What is working well for me? LinkedIn is working amazingly well for me as a platform. The the automa automation that I have set up works. And it's ironic all people come on to a prospective sales call about setting up automation. They're like, well, oh, it feels kind of gross. And I'm like, well, look at back in your messages because I exactly use what we're going to set up for you. And did that feel automated? Did it feel non-relational? Did it, did it feel transactional? They're like, no, it did not at all. So LinkedIn is working really well. A huge percentage of my business comes from there. The uh, monthly networking event and building that community is working tremendously well. People are huge fans. They, they really appreciate the ability to connect with people and network without being sold to. And I bring in new panelists every month that are those cross promoters, those non-compete folks that I can refer business to. So it's a win, 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 win for that community that we're building, which is tremendous. And then the other thing, this is a huge area where people leave money on the table that we did not talk about. But the other piece that's working really well for me is my email list. When you do personal connection messages with your email list and actually check in as if you're writing to your friend, but in intentional ways, those are the emails that people open the most that actually say, gosh, I want to work with you. Not mm -hmm. the ones that are salesy, not the ones that are you know, sharing your blog. Those are great. But when you're not just trying to use your email list in a transactional way and you're actually building that relationship, that connection, that community, people buy from you. So don't forget about the money you're leaving on the table in that gold mine, which is your email list. In case you forgot, go check that out. Go <laughs> test some things. It can't be said enough. I mean, I think people, I know my biggest mistake early in my business growth was not dedicating enough resources and time and headspace to that email creation. And I've 
made that course correction in my own business. And it is absolutely true. It's a conversation. It's such a privilege to be invited into somebody's space. I want to celebrate you. It's great to see the momentum continuing. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you here on our guest on Amplifier Marketing Message. Tell us how people find you, connect you, and what resource you're going to help them to stop leaving money on the table and really see more growth in your business. Absolutely. Thanks, Christine. And by the way, for everyone listening, Christine is amazing. She has her messaging dialed and we have very similar methodology and values. So if you're looking for help in her space, please reach out to her, work with her. She's incredible. <laughs> you're so Thank welcome. You. Thanks for having me here. So you can reach me at hollydeanjackson.com or Holly J. Jackson on LinkedIn. Obviously, I'm a huge proponent of LinkedIn. And then the resource I'd love to uh, leave your listeners with today is if you'd like a free consultation to experiment with and see if we are a fit because you want to pl plug those profit holes, because you want to actually build more revenue, and because you want to experiment with using LinkedIn in a more powerful, profound way, I will have that link for Christine. She'll have that in the show notes so you can sign up for that. It's a 30-minute call, completely complimentary, and you'll walk away with some clear indications of where you're leaving money on the table and some next steps you need to take. But only do that if you're ready to actually invest in yourself and take forward action. Absolutely, guys. We are the people who are ready to work with you when you're done with the excuses. I want to invite you. That is such an amazing gift. Don't think, am I ready? Think I'm done with my excuses. The time is now. Don't be your only fuel source. Get support around you. Holly's giving you an amazing gift. Please connect with her on her social platforms. Thank you for being our guest, guys. We will see you all on our next episode. That's a wrap on another amazing episode of Amplify Your Marketing Message with me, your host, Christine campbell Rappin. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss another great episode. And be sure to visit christinecampbellrappin.com slash podcast to get a free resource on how to master your marketing message. We'll see you all on our next episode.